And today I would like to discuss a highly fascinating, somewhat emotionally significant subject matter. This is the process of hiring and firing. In my opinion, my part today in the form of a monologue will not be as lengthy as usual. Therefore, please make sure to prepare any questions or scenarios if you would like to know my perspective, opinion, and vision on this highly significant and important topic. So let us commence the process with hiring. Look, I'm not going to delve into the intricacies and nuances of recruiting at this moment regarding how to conduct an interview. I will likely share more from my perspective, the most important details that I believe you should know. Uh, in the future, if you're interested in Feder's thoughts, you can visit our, uh, our YouTube channel to see what I'm about to share with you at this moment. Uh, I am frequently asked a question within the company outside of it regarding the kind of people we are looking for and what I want to understand in an interview uh, when I personally conduct the interview process. I will remind you that for some time, quite a long time, I conducted interviews with every employee who came to our company uh, because I was not alone and the team leaders, of course, made the decision, but uh, I was the final filter because it was important to understand whether the person fits the company and whether the company fits him. Ensuring a two-sided match is crucial for achieving optimal results and is of utmost importance in this context. Actually, the first thing I want to understand, again, I won't delve into any professional matters now. Uh, I believe that each of you comprehends within your respective fields what needs to be comprehended. However, for me, it is of utmost importance to comprehend the primary motivation of an individual and ascertain whether they possess intrinsic motivation, to what degree they are prepared to push themselves, and how significant personal growth is to them. Because, you know, firstly, our system is designed in such a way that it is impossible to motivate without key performance indicators, KPI, some short-term things, that is, some bonuses given on a quarterly basis, which serve as incentives for achieving specific targets and goals. An individual must possess internal motivation that consistently propels them to progress, evolve, and avoid remaining stagnant. And I need to know if a person has it, can he motivate himself? It's also crucial for me to understand if I call it product motivation. I haven't read this term in books, I just formulated it for myself. Product motivation implies that an individual seeks self-actualization. It is significant to them to engage in activities. His primary attraction lies in projects, opportunities that can be obtained within the company, utilizing company resources to create and implement his own ideas with the aim of building something. This drive stems from the fundamental need for implementation, which is a key motivator for both individuals and humanity as a whole. We have built a huge civilization here, and all of this was done by people because something constantly pushed them to create, build, invent, embody some cool ideas that were initially in their heads and then suddenly become reality and business. This is an opportunity to create in reality. The company's growth enables it to have more resources and opportunities, which in turn allows for the creation of cool things. I need to understand if a person possesses this drive when they inquire about products initially, their eyes light up when they hear about certain projects. This is what I consider to be product motivation and a crucial aspect in comprehending their level of interest. That is, there is still motivation when it comes to one's career. Once again, let's say a focus on self-realization. It does not in any way exclude ambition when it comes to one's career, but here it is important to consider what takes priority. And for me, of course, it is very important, this match in terms of culture, because this, again, does not mean that we are some kind of sect and do not accept those who are not like us. Firstly, it is crucial to comprehend that the values of the company are extremely transparent. I, uh, they are in close proximity for every culture, in every part of the globe, for every group of people, regardless of their location or background. The most important thing is that this culture change is crucial for the person who will come to us, because otherwise it will be very difficult to work comfortably and efficiently. In previous lectures, I discussed the absence of formal key performance indicators, KPIs, and bonuses in the company has a profound impact on motivation, which is greatly affected by the lack of these incentives and recognition for performance. And this system is built more on trust, on trust in the acceptance that all individuals in the organization behave in a manner that serves the company's best interests, comprehending their purpose within the company, understanding the value they contribute, and collaborating towards shared objectives. 
I need to understand, here is a person, he has something inside. From the point of view of his character, generally trust in people, because I believe that the capacity to trust is typically a characteristic, that is, individuals vary, and if people in general have the ability to trust, they will experience a sense of ease when working in a culture of trust. Then it is important for me to understand, because I believe that people in general somehow strive for two poles. The initial poll consists of individuals who primarily desire to inspire their colleagues, someone, a team, or in some way compel them to take action, or somehow motivate them to do something. Well, actually, these are also two different approaches, and they are simply inherent in different characters. And our company, of course, is primarily aimed at inspiring, well, we sometimes refer to it as selling, explaining, leading, because it is positive, constructive energy that propels our mission forward. In our culture, you can achieve remarkable results and excel with great proficiency, effectiveness, and success in your endeavors. Uh, it is uh, crucial for me to comprehend the significance of the status, the necessity for this social status, or whether the business, the product, the overall outcome holds greater importance to him. Once again, I am not stating in any way that something is good or something is bad there, but these are distinct poles. And let's assume. A person who places importance on formal status is in a highly flexible structure where everything can change, where roles are frequently not clearly defined, or they have the potential to change during the process. It is challenging, unclear, and uncomfortable for him. I have a need to experience and comprehend the situation. To summarize, I would illustrate the well-known triangle in relation to that particular subject. What criteria am I presently looking at at this very moment when I was actively searching for people to fulfill a specific role or requirement? The first thing important for me is enthusiasm and culture. Look, enthusiasm, she's motivation. One of my favorite Japanese entrepreneurs, Kanzuki Matsushito, stated that in Japan you can be highly intelligent, possess substantial wealth, but without enthusiasm you will not attain remarkable outcomes. Enthusiasm is desire, it is energy. And, you know, I often encountered, saw very cool professionals who can, but for some reason do not want to, or they are not inspired by some business, they do not see some big idea, they may have a crisis of meaning, they earned money, but there is no further meaning of this fire. And this fire drive energy, it is very important because business is, again, the transformation of ideas into reality with the help of capital talent a lot of work, a lot of people. To get all this moving, you need energy. This is akin to physical energy. Enthusiasm is the embodiment of these fiery eyes, the gauge of a person's energy level. Culture is the company's culture match. And at the foundation of all this lies professionalism. Look, it is very important to understand that if before our company being small was ready to hire people without experience, without professional knowledge, the main thing is that their eyes were burning and there was a cultural fit and everything else could be made up, could be learned. If it was possible to compensate with hard work, ability to work and grow together with the company, then today, when we have already entered a certain higher league of business, unfortunately, we cannot hire people without some professionalism and experience but enthusiasm and culture are still mandatory traits in any case. Definitely, damn it. Of course, someone will say that we are eliminating the opportunity for individuals to join the company, uh, perhaps without a lot of experience. However, yes, when you're already participating in a specific league, it becomes an unavoidable requirement, and it is crucial to address the issue of individuals who lack professionalism. She, you simply need to study, develop, come to some, perhaps starting positions and grow in a company where it is possible that not such high demands on professionalism are required here. Uh, the query I came across while working and developing is who hires individuals? And different companies have varied approaches and behaviors in this particular aspect. HR or business after all, uh, look, there are companies, there are such companies where in general, uh, the hiring decision is mostly made by the HR team. It operates in a distinct manner for us. We are an organization of individuals in positions of authority, and an individual in a position of authority is seeking individuals to join his or her team. Uh, the decision is made by the business, but of course, HR acts as a partner in this process. We have HR business partners who assist by being professionals 
in evaluating and assessing the capabilities of individuals. The HR team can understand whether a person will feel comfortable with us, whether they fit in with the culture or However, the ultimate determination naturally rests with the business, with the team leader. And he is interested in general. In fact, HR greatly helps the team, but uh, the success of hiring, attracting cool people, of course, depends primarily on the leader because individuals can be searched for both independently and by utilizing the opportunities provided by human resources assistance. Because the leader is interested in this matter, he forms his own team of individuals in order to pursue the objectives and tasks at hand. Friends, I am transitioning to the second reverse side of the medal. Perhaps an even more urgent and emotionally challenging issue is the act of dismissal. Probably one of the most emotional subjects in the realm of business and entrepreneurship. I will begin with a few stories generally. I'll tell how I fired someone for the first time. Um, I was working at that time, I worked as an archaeologist. Afterwards, I entered an advertising agency, started doing marketing, and later got a job in a large retail company, specifically in a hypermarket. Despite my background as an archaeologist, I became the head of the marketing department by educating myself through reading books on marketing. And there was a situation where I needed, the person was not coping, and I understood that it was necessary to fire the person. I, I will tell you that it was a huge stress for me. Uh, I'm generally the kind of person who doesn't like to upset people. It consistently causes me stress. I experienced feelings of guilt regarding it. And the first time I was dismissed, it was a highly stressful experience for me that left a lasting impact. Furthermore, when I initiated my own business, individuals commenced to leave me. And my initial reaction was indeed incorrect and misguided. I recall that he is similar to an entrepreneur who is passionate about his business for whom everything is centered around business. And on a personal level, it is all intertwined. There were situations when people walked away from me and I perceived it as betrayal. I acted emotionally. Uh, and then naturally I grew up, reflected and came to the realization that it was wrong, uh, inadequate behavior, childish, so to speak, in a manner of speaking. People, this is their life, their freedom. They dedicated their time to their business, to the company they work for. If they departed well, there is nothing incorrect with that. It is marvelous and you need to be capable of releasing here. I also made adjustments here when individuals departed from me. Generally, the issue of termination is unfavorable. And you know, probably when the term dismissal is uttered, everyone feels a bit, yes, there is like a slight involuntary movement somewhere. And those leaders from whom individuals were departing and the individual who may feel unsafe who were terminated from their positions and no longer employed by the organization. However, I want to inform you that this is a totally wrong attitude and it is crucial that this attitude needs to be changed. Dismissal, first of all, is not a tragedy. Don't treat it as something terrible, sad. And termination is not a criminal offense. That is, if once again, everything is executed correctly and proficiently, there is no culpability in it which is occasionally experienced by leaders who are responsible for making the decision. Dismissal is typical. Why? Because life is change. It is the essence of reality. Life is always in a state of constant change. And the conclusion of one is always the commencement of something else. We receive, we progress, we move forward, we carry on, we persevere. And how do I personally feel at this very moment about being fired right now in the present time? You know, as an entrepreneur, uh, having experienced powerful crises, including financial crises, uh, I think many people are aware that Dodo is not my first business. My first business was extremely unsuccessful about that. Uh, I went bankrupt and exited this business with a significant amount of debt. And as an entrepreneur, when I started my business, I accepted the possibility of going bankrupt knowing it wouldn't be a tragedy, but rather the start of something new. Honesty with colleagues, potential creditors, and conducting business with integrity are crucial. Being open about bankruptcy is not something terrible. As long as I am honest and transparent in my dealings, uh, you shouldn't be afraid of this because if you are afraid, you constantly feel anxious. And the same probably I also relate. It is evident that I am in a unique position within our company. I can be terminated considering I am a member of the board of directors. However, I generally believe that whatever may occur, one must simply accept it. 
There is nothing dreadful about it, similar to how samurai always kept death in mind or how Roman Stoics approached life. Therefore, one can also contemplate the possibility of dismissal, recognizing that it is not a tragedy. By doing so, it will not give rise to excessive concern or worry. Dismissal in my world is a mutually beneficial dismissal when an individual has dedicated their work, energy, and talent to the company, and the company has provided them with the chance to grow, learn, contribute, and earn a salary along with stocks. And uh, in fact, um, this partnership which occurred, which ultimately concluded there is absolutely nothing terrible or negative about it in any way, shape, or form. Thus, each and every person received all the things and gave them to one another. And this is not a tragedy, but rather a dismissal of their roles and responsibilities. Who makes the decision about firing from my point of view in our company? Of course, this decision is made by the leader. If the team does not have one leader, it is some kind of collective leadership. Then the decision is made by uh, the collective. But in any case, the, the person who is responsible, he or she makes the decision. At the same time, we, we assume that the leaders in our company are individuals of worth who we have entrusted them with this responsibility, which means they share our values, they act within the framework of our culture. And I must inform you, acquaintances, that termination is in fact equally challenging as resignation or be fired from that place because, yes, it seems that here it is a matter of an individual who is in a lower level of security. But once again, the company and we are completely focused on ensuring that all separations are conducted with utmost honesty, everything is thoroughly discussed, and there were compensations provided to the affected parties. In general, accepting psychologically, approaching, admitting you're not coping is actually very hard to do. And leaders must possess this strength in an amount that is enough to venture beyond the comfort zone and actively participate in a particular conflict of this nature. Conflict is not just a negative word. Any contradiction, regardless of its nature, is considered a form of conflict. To understand fear of stress and conflict can lead to avoiding the problem, and ultimately stagnation is necessary. If the product which the company must develop, we understand that someone is not coping with this role specifically, as it does not fit in terms of strategy and is not working out effectively. Attempts to avoid stress will result in stagnation. Therefore, we must handle layoffs appropriately if we desire the company to experience growth. Is it possible for a leader who made a decision that a person is not suitable to be mistaken or in error? Take note, the leader bears responsibility. Um, there is no definitive answer to this particular question at the moment in time. Why? Because it is set incorrectly. A leader, if he acts even within the framework of culture, is an honest and trustworthy person who upholds integrity and values makes decisions based on business, not personal ones, and we by default believe that leaders act in this manner, then the leader is responsible. And the leader has the right to decide for himself whether this person is suitable or not. To assert that something was unjust is an impossibility because in actuality it is tantamount to expressing that our pizza has not been bought, thereby rendering it unfair in nature. For some reason, it is not being bought, we need to figure out why we are not suitable for customers. And if the leader made this decision, he is accountable for it. He is accountable for the outcomes, so it must be acknowledged. And this does not always mean that a person is bad, worked specifically poorly, maybe he is not a good fit for the strategy, perhaps he does not fit the pace of the work uh, for some reason. Because if, for example, a coach came to a football team he can change the team simply because he changes the game strategy and wants to strengthen defense instead of attack. Is there any way to formally structure this feedback? I frequently hear, I'm informed that there was a dismissal, but there was not sufficient feedback provided. Um, these are all quite subjective things. First of all, not everything can be structured, not all feedback. Not all feedback is listened to. Sometimes the leader simply states, for instance, I desire it to be of outstanding quality. You're doing well. And the person says, I think that I'm doing well, I'm doing great right now. And in this particular scenario, it is not possible to formalize it. This is simply the expert decision made by the leader in this specific situation. But he is a leader, but he is given this responsibility. And he bears this responsibility because he ultimately bears responsibility for the result. You know, I had an exchange of ideas and opinions with the human resources team during a discussion that took place. 
our company is great because we can discuss, we can have different perspectives. I will express my opinion. Uh, there was a discussion about whether it is necessary to inform, how to inform about dismissal. Such a detail, such a ritual, whether orally or in writing. Look, the HR team firmly believes that it is necessary to carry out this communication orally as it is a way to show respect for the person. And I believe that this is completely unnecessary. Ah, uh, of course, it is necessary to meet in person to discuss the final of human relationship, but it is quite possible to write about the reasons in writing. Why? Because by creating psychological difficulties for a person deciding to speak out, that he needs to say it verbally, we also create a situation where people avoiding stress will avoid encountering problems. Because there are individuals who are introverted, for whom it is generally challenging to articulate something verbally. I mean, some stressful situations. Sometimes when you communicate about termination with words, you essentially cannot fully explain the reasons adequately. You can logically describe all this in writing. It will be good feedback that will be valuable to a person, but orally it can be emotional and a person may even stop listening because of emotions. So it's a good idea to give time to read, understand, and then meet, it's quite possible. The most crucial aspect for me is that we avoid establishing any obstacles in this situation because naturally we need to consider the departing employees, but we also need to consider the challenge of terminating someone's employment. And by introducing barriers, we are essentially creating a scenario where we may begin to experience a lack of progress and become inclined towards our own interests. Uh, the question was also posed to me. How do I feel about horizontal transitions within the company, whether they are good or bad? Mm, I, as you can see, have a good relationship with them, but it is important to note that uh, mandatory horizontal transitions should never be imposed under any circumstances. Because you see, if an individual departs from one position and they make an effort to unquestionably locate some position for him or her within the organization, or possibly a team leader attempting to separate amicably, absolve themselves of guilt, attempting to discover a spot for an individual, then it is not a competitive situation. We must comprehend. We must be extremely demanding of ourselves and understand that these processes will gradually lead to us becoming inefficient, non-competitive, and ultimately hinder our ability to succeed. Because every position, you need to see who will be better on it. At this position, if we really want to play in the top league and achieve some outstanding results, such is the fate of our company. If we set goals to achieve great results, breakthroughs, big goals, we must accept that it is like in a sports team that plays, wants to go to the Olympic Games, such requirements. Thus, it is necessary to verify horizontal transitions for each position to ensure accuracy and consistency throughout. It is wonderful when an individual from our organization who has a comprehension of culture takes on a job in a different industry. However, if they succeed in the competition, it becomes highly competitive. So here's my attitude well, and an important point. You see, leaving the company, it's not leaving Dodo. It's pleasant when we continue to stay friends while our colleagues from the management company make a transition to working for partners in their new roles. So people start their own businesses while others open our franchises. There are numerous examples of such cases. This is a community because dismissal is not the end. Maybe you need to replace the word uvolnenie with some other word because it has a completely negative connotation. Someone leaves the company with shares and keeps an eye on the company, wishes it success and helps in some way. Someone simply once more continues to stay in our community. Maybe we will continue to collaborate in the future. I have encountered a situation where people who left the company, uh, we maintained good relationships with them and then started working with them again as they created some businesses or worked in another company. Well, and the ultimate one, you, you probably assume that I have a desire for there to be more layoffs in the company. Definitely not. I desire individuals in the organization to be employed for an extended period of time. The more time we spend working, the more our competencies are developed and wisdom gradually starts to emerge. In actuality, obtaining a comprehensive understanding of the business, product, customer, and market requires a significant amount of time and effort investment because at that point, true wisdom begins to reveal itself. However, it is evident that there are distinct life cycles that occur. If individuals are prepared to progress with the organization to fresh levels in crucial roles, 
I am definitely in favor. I am happy when I see people who uh, started, uh, we started together in Sektovkar who have been working with the company for 10 years or more, come on stage and receive recognition for their dedication and hard work. However, at the same time, I have a strong desire for the company to remain demanding of itself, highly efficient and consistently honest with itself. Uh, I desire for the company to persist and grow. Every one of us who has been employed by the company has contributed a part of ourselves here, the principles that it has established, and she will persist in living as long as the company maintains its efficiency and effectiveness in operations. You know, I changed my roles, yes. I came to the realization that as a chief executive officer, looking ahead to the future, considering the future of madness and aiming for the company to achieve a new global level, I am already experiencing a lack of the necessary energy to accomplish these goals. I'll add value to the company in a different role as a shareholder, as a board member, and as a startup consultant. 